Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle Channel. This video is going to be a comparison between the 27DMO2 motor and the CYC Photon. I'm going to split this into different chapters so you can use the timestamps in the video description to jump around. I'm going to say where I think a particular motor has an advantage. It's going to be my opinion though and I have no motivation to favour one company over another. 27 did send me the motors at no cost but I'm not going to hide faults where I see them because there are some areas where I think the CYC Photon is doing things better hands down. Originally this video was also going to include the Tong Sheng but I've not been able to use one personally yet or get one here so um, I'm not going to do that right now. There are a few people on our Discord that have gone from the Tong Sheng to the DMO2 and consider it to be the superior motor, so you can always chat to them about their experiences on there if you wanted. The video footage here is from some riding I've been doing with my modified DMO2 because that's what I have on the bike right now. I'm going to start with the price. Everybody wants to know how much something costs. This is one of the, the few areas where the DMO2 I think has a really clear advantage. You can get a DMO2 for just over a third the cost of a Photon. I want to be very very clear here though, the value of something is completely different to the price of something. Right, The value of something is a very personal thing and that's a call that you guys can make individually and hopefully the information here is going to help. The actual price will vary a bit depending on your country and whether you use a, a dealer or an online import place. But a third the cost is a rough ballpark figure, so 1100 bucks for a photon system and just over 400 for a DMO2. Size and fit, the motors are of similar size and weight. The photon is slightly lighter but not to the point where you would notice it when riding. The Photon is a slightly different shape, but they both really take up the same kind of space on a bike. In the installs I've done so far, the lowest point on both motors has been the chain ring. So it would be that hitting into the ground on the trail before the motor casing. The DMO2 is a little bit longer, so it might make it harder with some downhill frames, but not to a huge extent. Where I give the Photon the real edge here is in the versatility of bottom brackets that it can be used with, as well as widths of bottom bracket. You can use the Photon with a fat bike and I don't think that's possible with a DMO2 right now. You can also get a wider range of chain rings with the Photon which is made possible with the compact reduction. You also get a good chain line with all these options. The smallest you can get with the DMO2 is a 42T. Although in reality, unless you're climbing up 30% grades regularly or have a very, very narrow rear cassette, the smaller chain rings are not really needed, especially not in the days of 11 to 48T cassettes. In terms of looks, I'd say the Photon is more futuristic and stylish. It's not something I care about. I'd take function over form any day of the week. But the Photon looks like a modern product and the DMO2 looks a bit dated in its appearance. In terms of Q factor, the Q factor is quite wide on both of these motors and right now it's better with the CYC. However, there is room for considerable improvement with the DMO2 just by changing out the cranks for something different. I've advised 27 to redo these parts because there is room to get the pedals into the frame by about 40 millimeter or more. My attitude with the Q factor is if it's something that really bothers you, probably not this kind of motor, um, but it could be better. Installation, both motors are not difficult to install. I would give the DMO2 a little bit of an edge. You remove your bike's existing cranks and bottom bracket and slot it in. The only bit I don't like is the tool. I use a hammer to torque it into place and I've not had one come loose yet, even using an upgraded controller. The Photon is a bit more involved with spaces and such although it's actually easy to get the correct torque because you can use a very common socket tool for the bottom bracket installation. I've said enough about the CYC chain tool, it's garbage. I assume they'll be sending the new aluminum version with kits from now on. If it's an optional extra, I think they'll be taking the piss a bit. You need to pay close attention to spaces, particularly on the non-drive side. If you have your left crank come loose, you're probably using too many. 
you really need to crunch on ISIS cranks for them to not work loose. There is more to go wrong with the Photon install, but it's also not rocket science either. And if you follow the instructions, watch a few videos, you should be fine. In terms of power and performance, I'm gonna talk about how the motors are as it stands. And later on, I'll have a section on the potential of the motors going forward, particularly if companies like 27 want to put the development in. These are both pedal assist motors. The default for DMO2 is without a throttle. You can use one, but for most people it's not needed. The same goes for the Photon. I wouldn't bother. Like, it's pretty gutless up any kind of hill. Even if you put the Photon throttle to 2000 watts, it's just not that kind of motor. On the flat, a bit better, but no more exciting than spinning up the cranks. Out of the box, the Photon therefore does have the edge power-wise, and it's primarily due to the more advanced control. I'll talk about this more later, but with the Photon it throttles the power to protect the motor, with the DMO2 it's throttling to protect the controller. I've been for some long rides with both of these motors, and my takeaway is that the Photon can sustain 750 watts and the DMO2 500 watts. Beyond 750 watts the Photon throttles to keep the motor within limits, beyond 500 watts the DMO2 does the same to stop the controller overheating. Supposedly the latest DMO2 firmware has improved current handling, but I've not been able to verify this, so later this summer we can revisit it. It's definitely the controller restricting power though on the DMO2 because when the DMO2 starts to throttle you can put your hand on the motor and it's not, not very hot at all. In terms of maximum power, I was seeing up to 900 watts on the 27 and unrestricted you can set the foes onto 2000 watts. Paddle assist would peak at 1600 to 1800 watts under load on the Photon. So I would give the Photon the edge because you can run it at a higher sustained power and you have the option of unrestricted for some extra fun. Torque sensor wise, the CYC excels. It's better than the DMO2 in feel and responsiveness. I have seen the DMO2 improve, but even now it's not quite as refined the ability to tune the torque sensor in the CYC is also better as the settings you can adjust in the app are more clearly defined. On the DMO2 there are a lot of options, but nothing as simple as just adjusting a few sliders to get a different response or sensitivity. There is not really a do this do that guide for the company to help people dial it in, and several of the key settings are not adjustable but require a firmware update. I have not tried the very latest firmware, which according to Discord members is a further improvement. I will put it at about 85% of the feel of the CYC torque sensor. And what I don't know is if this is because the sensor itself is fundamentally better on the CYC or if it's the parameters and tuning that's making the difference. So there is potential the DMO2 could get closer to the Photon, but as it stands the Photon is the better motor. Peripherals wise, I'm going to give CYC again an edge here. You have the choice of two displays as well as a slick app as an extra option via a phone mount. There's nothing horrible about the DMO2 display, it's just more basic in design and function. In terms of the throttle, the one with the photon is nicer, the DMO2 is a bit cheaper looking if you do choose one. The cranks on the CYC are nicer, they give it a narrow key factor and there is actually lots of room to improve the cranks on the DMO2. Not tried the brake cutoffs on either. I think they're a bit pointless with torque sensing motors, which might be a bit controversial, but it's the way I feel about it. In terms of firmware updates, I, I much prefer the CYC way of doing things. It's much more modern and slick. If I need to update the firmware on a 2.7 motor, I have to unplug the display. Then I have to update the motor and the display separately using a bundle of cables and a power supply, along with my laptop running software. With the Photon, I can just open up my phone, connect to the controller, and it takes a minute tops. The 2.7 motors, it's about 10 minutes, and honestly, it's a pain in the ass. In terms of changing settings, with the DMO2, the parameters are changed via a menu system in the display and the four button keypad and there is an extensive range of options that can currently be accessed, probably too many if anything. There's no need for someone to be able to change the pole pairs on the motor 
and it's led to some issues I've seen where people have created problems for themselves by changing these settings without understanding what they do. It's a bit clunky, but it does work, and you don't need a phone to do it. You can select up to not you can select up to nine different power levels and configure each individual one. I use five, which feels plenty. The Photon has three levels you can configure in the same way. In practice, I never found myself wanting for more as the torque sensor does a great job of regulation of power. The CYC Photon uses a pretty slick phone app. There are less options to play with. You have less flexibility when it comes to power levels, but it's a much nicer interface. The motor is tuned pretty well out of the box for the most part. Being a VESC based controller, in theory, it should be further tunable with Vestool. However, despite initially it being indicated by COSC that Vestool would be an option, it's not materialized. I think when it came down to it, a judgment call was made, like a cost benefit analysis. Is it worth letting people make granular level changes with their motors? While it would be welcomed by some, it would also mean the potential for customer service headaches from people with zero real knowledge of controllers changing settings. Field weakening in a photon is not an option, but you could enable it with a vest tool and then it's probably goodbye motor. You then get the issue where people will go to CYC and claim this kind of thing on warranty, which is not, not exactly fair. In the same vein, I think 2.7 will need to restrict access to some of the motor braking parameters on their menu system. I think it will save their customer service people headaches and they really add nothing to the end user experience. One of my criticisms of the CYC stuff has always been there's no definitive guide on exactly what different settings do. It was a total nightmare in their ASI days. There are less settings now in their VEST controller, but there's still no do X and get Y guide that comes with the motor. They have, however, been making some much, much better videos of late. So another one that would be excellent is to go through all the settings and then show people how they affect the bike's handling with real world examples. It's the same with the DMO2. We have all these parameters, but determining exactly which one does what is difficult because of a lack of information. Exactly what parameter you need to adjust something and how it's done is not always very clear. I've seen lengthy conversations on Discord as to how to adjust the motor overrun so power cuts off faster after you stop pedaling, but I'm not even sure that there is a parameter you can adjust to do that. The decisions being made with firmware on the DMO2 also seem to be a little odd. When I first received motors to test, you could switch between three different modes, street, sport, and eco. I actually like that. But then out of the blue, the modes changed to M1 and M2, which I was told were for torque and speed but no real explanation as to what they do or what parameters affect them. I realize there is a language barrier between Chinese and English, but in this day and age of translation technology, I think it should be possible to have something better. In terms of reliability, both of these motors are very new. So in terms of long-term reliability, I think the jury is very much still out. I had an early development model of the DMO2 and ran into firmware issues. The production version, I felt, much improved and is running well still. My CYC Photon had a problem with the hall sensors and quite a few other early adopters have run into issues. CYC feels 90% of these issues are due to manufacturing defects in QC and the latest production runs are much more stable. After I got my motor back it ran for about 30 kilometers and now powers off after a few seconds and has various other gremlins. I'm not going to go into that here, I need to find time to troubleshoot it. My experiences can't be representative of all motors for sure. The upshot though is that there's not really enough time in history to say that one is more reliable than the other at this stage. I can say that from my experience both companies have stood by their products and have helped people when they've run into issues. In terms of a warranty you get a more generous two-year one with the Photon. If you want to get support with the DMO2 I get it from a dealer like California e-bike rather than the cheaper online options. You'll pay a bit more, but it's way easier to deal with things if there's an issue than it is to get anywhere with online sellers. Ease of repair of the two motors, the GMO2 is the easiest to take apart. You can get access to the gearing and motor with regular tools that everyone has. The structure of the motor is relatively well known. A person should be able to make repairs or regrease parts at home. Parts are supposed to be available via the company and to be stopped by dealers. 
The Photon is more difficult to take apart. It's designed to be serviced by a qualified dealer. To me, that's not really a true DIY motor if repairs need to be performed by a dealer, but you can see why they would do it. The motor has potentially a wider appeal than traditional DIY motors, so that kind of rider might be quite happy sending the motor to a dealer to get re-greased and checked over every few years. For some though, this will be a deal breaker, and if that's the case, it's probably not the motor for you. I think a lot depends on the reliability, as discussed earlier, as well as the turnaround. CYC are building out partners to reduce turnaround time. Two weeks without a bike is much more manageable than six. In terms of future potential, a part of me wishes you could wave a magic wand and take the best bits of the Photon and combine them with the best bits of the DMO2. You can see where the money was spent on the Photon. It has a vest-based controller. It has this compact structure that lets it fit a wide range of bottom brackets with a good chain line. But the motor itself, I think, limits it. I'm not going to call using an outrunner the wrong choice, but I get the impression that CYC didn't design this motor but used something that was available. That's my guess anyway. I think they took an existing outrunner and maybe had it modified a bit. It looks exactly like the ones people are running on e-skateboards. The reasoning I've been given for not using an in-runner is that it would resulted in not enough torque for a motor its size. But what you also have then is a motor with a max RPM of just over 3000. Now the DMO2 to me is the opposite. To me the money on the DMO2 went on the motor. And when we compare the size of the DMO2 to the Photon, there's not really that much difference. So I think the idea the only way to get sufficient torque in the Photon was to use an outrunner doesn't really fly with me. The DMO2 can hit a higher RPM, so you can make up for the torque with a 53 to 1 gear ratio. So the extra torque advantage of the Photon motor is largely made up for by the gear ratio. The vest controller on the Photon is totally capable of things like field weakening, it's just that the motor is not really capable of handling it. With the 27 DMO2 you have a motor that can handle it, it's just the controller is the weak point. So there is potential to extract considerably more performance from the DMO2 by using a better controller. I've already proven this to some extent with the testing I've done with the ASI controller. Once the 27 controller is removed from the equation, the DMO2 core is capable of performing above that of the Photon. As in, I was able to ride in 20 degree weather, dumping 1000 watts into the motor and the temperature didn't go over 60 C even after a long hill climb. I'm not trying to suggest that the ASI is a particularly viable solution because the kit to do all this is over $600 but the upshot is thermally the motor is quite capable, the controller less so. By using an in-runner with keyed magnets, you have the ability to boost the motor with field weakening and increase the top RPM of the DMO2. We had the DMO2 hitting 25,000 RPMs on the bench at 72 volts. On the road, I've only been using 52 volts and using field weakening with moderation, but you can still have considerable fun for a few kilometers or a quick burst now and then I just back off once it goes over 60C. If I had to pick a position, I'd probably be more happy to be in 27's position because I think it's going to be easier for them to detach the controller from the motor and upgrade it than it is for CYC to improve the motor on the Photon, although I am very interested to see what they'll do with the larger Proton version. Now whether 27 are prepared to do any of this is up to them. As the expression for the Wild West goes, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Anyway, I think that's enough for me here. If I've missed something, let me know, and I'll do my best to address it in the comments. If you've been running either of these motors, let me know. It'll be great to hear about your experiences, and feel free to discuss any aspect of this in the comments or on Discord. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.